everybody, what's going on? It's me, Bigfoot One Gaming here. Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while for honestly long term videos on this channel. I, I, I do apologize. I've been uh, doing a lot of school work. I am in college, so obviously that's going to take priority. Um, and I've also been streaming live on Twitch a little bit more often than not. Um, than kind of actually doing sitting down and recording videos. Plus, there's not many games out right now that have kind of kind of caught my eye. In September, we'll see a lot more streams come back up um, on here on the channel, um, on YouTube at least, um, continuing as well on Twitch as well. Um, but yeah, we are back with the zero overall rebuild, and as you can see, we did relocate to Rio de Janeiro, and we are now the Rio Dragons. And, if you couldn't tell by the title, we did have, we did, you know, go ahead and make the Colts uh, pretty much be this. As you can see, Rio de Janeiro uh, in Brazil. So, we are in the midst of building the stadium and everything. It actually doesn't let you do it in the first preseason game, which is actually kind of cool. Um, but let's look at the roster, shall we? Obviously, it's a zero overall rebuild. But, the one zero we don't have is Anthony Richardson. So can Anthony Richardson be our quarterback that we're going to build around and make sure that he can, you know, eventually win a Super Bowl? Obviously, we did this last year. Um, I actually didn't finish it, um, and I kind of upset with myself. I got kind of tired of the game um, and so on and so forth, but now we're going to go for it. We're going to, again, if you don't remember the rules, they'll pop up here. So kind of get you a... If you, if you are new, here's the rules as well uh, that you can see. But obviously, everyone's now at 12 overall with zero everything. Of course, maybe a couple of guys like left tackle with carrying and like ball carrier version, stuff like that. That's not shown on there for me when I'm doing making the zero overall. Besides Anthony Richardson being a 70 overall with his 91 speed and stuff like that. So, um... This first episode is going to be like more of an introduction as well as, you know, everything like that with introducing the Rio Dragons um, and kind of going from there. Obviously, we'll, we'll, we will do Season 1 um, and, of course, maybe Season 2 uh, kind of talking over that. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys at the end of the season. And here we are at the end of the season. Obviously, we see the Philadelphia Eagles and the Buffalo Bills make the Super Bowl. So, first season, Philadelphia and Buffalo. I know people have done a lot of like simulations with that and everything to kind of get that. Uh, but here are some stats along the season. You know, Anthony Richardson, only 1,500 yards, which is kind of very surprising, but had 32 interceptions. That's a lot of interceptions. <laughs> like, a lot of interceptions. Uh, but again, played all 17, you know, we allowed 16, we only had 1600 yards. I think we allowed like 9,000, uh, defensive yards, but Lamar Jackson won MVP and defensive player of the year. Uh, we did not have any offensive or defensive rookie of the years. Um, but as you can see, kind of going over here, best D line, best linebacker, stuff like that. Kind of, if you are interested in that part of it, um, of course, me, myself being a Chiefs fan, seeing Trent McDuffie up there at number two was really awesome to see, and at least the simulation-wise uh, for Kansas City. But, so, of course, we'll find out who makes, or who actually kind of went in the playoffs-wise. Here's the playoff bracket, again, with Philadelphia and Buffalo as a 5 and a 6 seed, which is kind of, and also the Jets getting the 1 seed. I've, one of the first times I've actually simulated and that was actually the case, so kind of cool to see. But here we are um, having the Buffalo Bills and the Philadelphia Eagles uh, go at it compared to a couple other weeks. But uh, we'll find out who actually wins the Super Bowl right here and right now. And I believe it is going to be the Eagles, 38-28 to 28 over the Buffalo Bills. So here we are in free agency as well. Um, so with free agency, kind of everything needs a pretty much a body at this point. Um, the one, I guess, again, we can only sign one player. If you guys didn't see the rules, it is going to be early on here. But uh, we did sign strong safety Grant Delpit, 79 overall. He's only 25, so that really helps out because uh, he is on the younger side. 
of like a free agent. We weren't going to sign like a 30 year old guy. He was going to play for like a couple seasons. Um, so, so we got a really good, strong safety that upgrades the defense a little bit. Um, and we kind of go from, go from there at least with this, uh, with the defensive side of the football. Um, we have a little bit of an upgrade along with a couple other things as well. And we have finally made it to the NFL draft for our first season with the Rio Red Dragons. So with the first overall pick, obviously we're probably we're not gonna be picking here at pick number one. There wasn't very many at least too many guys on our radar at this point um, that kind of popped out at us to go number one. Um, there's a couple of decent picks, especially with the Lions offering a couple firsts. I mean, everyone was offering multiple firsts, multiple seconds. Um, obviously, Detroit offered their fourth, two firsts, a sixth, and a seventh for uh, two years from now. Um, Vikings were pretty decent, but that's also draft going back to 23rd. Also, it's the, all their whole first and second rounds from 24 to 26. So I was thinking always of Draft Day, the movie. I want my picks back, all of them. Um, but eventually, um, we kind of look at all of it, see what we can get out of everything. Um, and I believe we do go with the Detroit Lions trade, getting three first-round picks along with the sixth and the seventh for two years from now. So a little bit better for us, especially going to be in Season 3 when those picks do come into play. They're really, really good for us. Obviously, we go one by one. Uh, Sean Robertson does go the left tackle out of UCF, one of the best tackles on the board um, at the time. Uh, do go. Honestly, we're looking at Max Kerr the whole time. A awareness, A impact block, A run block, and P or a B pass block. Um, so we we're looking at him. We we're just hoping that he stays there at until four, um, and he eventually does. Uh, Kinley goes uh, to the Bucks, and then the Raiders go quarterback of McCoughlin uh, from Stanford. So they go quarterback. So obviously Max Kerr is going to be one of the ones that we look for. We were looking at more picks as well to seeing if, hey, if someone does give us like maybe trading back to like the sixth pick. Of course, the, the Rams give up another first round pick because that's what they do. The Lions offered more picks as well. Sup a couple second, third and fourths for this year, next year and the year after. Um, there's a couple people that we were looking at uh, for this, but we ended up thinking hey max Kerr is probably not going to be there later on in this draft we have to get our pretty much our star tackle now which i do apologize for all like the loading situations here it, it does take forever to load and that is just madden being madden unfortunately i can't change that but so it's not it's not anything that you guys are messing with it's actually just the game uh but we do end up going max Kerr. um a awareness he is ran a 486 in his pro day a 486 in the combine um you know Broad jumpy, you know, pretty good. He was he's really fast, really, you know, elite speed, elite agility, elite change of direction for a for an offensive lineman's insane. Plus he has eight lead block. Of course that pass block, the run block finesse and the uh pass block finesse are really good. Um so uh with our first pick in Dragons history, we go Max Kerr. He is a hidden development, which is awesome to get a tackle with already hidden development, which is amazing. 22, he's out of Stanford, 88 strength, 81 excel. Again, C injury is not really going to matter. Stamina is a little bit low in that in that D range, but, you know, it's it's all fine and dainty from there. Um, so going to the second round pick. So now Anthony Richardson has a right tackle. So... You know, so far we've made an upgrade of a strong safety and a tackle position. Still, we still need a lot more stuff. So again, we we're kind of looking at trades again, seeing if everyone, if anyone wants to make any trades uh, with us. And there was a lot of people that did. You know, the Vikings after a first round pick, uh, which was going to be nice, but I didn't get any picks this year, which kind of is what I was kind of looking for. Um, Seahawks did a decent one. Of course, there's another first, a couple more first round picks, but no one was really offering any picks this year. Um, Besides, like, maybe two or three teams. For example, the Falcons offered a second, a third, and a seventh for next season. Um, the Eagles did offer a fourth rounder for this year, but wasn't really looking for that. Because um, then that puts us in a little bit of a bind. But, you know, the the Texans did offer two picks this year. Um, 
and a seventh for next season as well. But we do go up for the Falcons with a second and third, and then a seventh round for next season. It's pretty much the same thing as the other one. Um, so we do go, we do go from number one down to number twenty-two in the second round, which there wasn't really anyone else kind of popping up on our radar as well in the top, you know, first round that we were looking for. Um, we got our guy in Max Kerr, and now it's just kind of going from there. Obviously, we are still looking for offensive line help. Jason McKnight popped out immediately. He's 6'5 out of LSU. Um, we end up taking a look at him here. A impact, P, uh, B pass, B run. Decently fast. He's not as fast as Kerr, uh, but A stamina a lot better than another guy uh, of, of Max Kerr. Um, these guy, he would be the blind side to um, Anthony Richardson. And he and eventually was. He's LSU, uh, nutty strength. Again, only normal development, which I'm I'm definitely okay with. Um, but you know, I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely fine with that. But now, third round pick. Um, so we have made already upgrades to our two tackle positions as well as strong safety in the free agents with Grant Delpit. So now it's pretty much kind of taking best player available now at pretty much any position um we end up actually going with a another defensive player here our first draft pick on defense wise um we're kind of looking at jerome means um there's a couple other guys that we're kind of taking a look at um we end up looking at mitch stokes here uh and by the way watch out for this guy because i will say this guy Kind of surprises me. Um, four four two. He was the fastest uh, safety. Um, he can jump. He has really good acceleration. We do take him. He's twenty two out of Michigan State. Hidden development. Ninety one excel or ninety one speed. Eighty six excel. Eighty nine agility. Eighty six change of direction and eighty six jumping at the strong safety. He is actually going to be our strong safety. We move Grant Delbit to free safety. I don't show that in this video. Um, at least I don't remember. Um, but. He, we do move a couple people to be in a better spot. Second third round pick because of the Falcons trade early on in this, uh, actually that last trade that we just did. So pick up an extra third, which is very, very nice. Um, I was thinking, again, more defense. Defense, defense, defense is what we really, really need. Um, I was kind of taking a look at, you know, Kendrick Macklin, maybe taking a shot on him because we don't know too much. And then my eye got caught on Devin Mumphrey. He has a round two to three talent. We're in the third round. Of course, his projected third or fourth round again has a lot better talent than what he is. He's gone up. He's gone up 14 points over the season. Decently fast at 4.37 and on his pro day, he had a 4.42 at the combine. Solid strength, good speed, good jumping, solid change of direction, good agility, and great acceleration. You know, acceleration 4.19 in the 20 yard. He is really good tackling at an A and a good kick returner at as well. Um, and good stamina. He is also B block shit, so if we do want to, you know, blitz him, we can. And he's a normal development, 21 out of Texas Tech, 92 Excel, 92 speed, and then 88s uh, for those three down there. So another good pickup for the defense. So we pick up two defensive backs. So that really helps out, at least our defense wise. Not really because we don't have, you know, any D line or linebackers at this point, but uh, fourth round pick. So we've already made two upgrades to the offense, two upgrades to the defense. Um, I was thinking maybe pick it up Jerome Means there at in the fourth round. Same thing with Danny Brackett giving Anthony Richardson a kind of a, kind of a target to go after. But we did find Callum Fox. Vertical threat, we do need a pass catcher at the tight end position. Um he was really the only one that was there, and we picked him. 23 out of Oklahoma State, 86 speed, 85 Excel. Not too shabby there, to be honest with you. Um, of course, we do go into ratings after the draft. But, hey, it was it's a person at uh, tight end. We need one, and he fills the position. Uh, it's fifth round. So we got three more picks here um, left to go in this first draft class. We end up again going, thinking, hey, maybe 
as soon as we go offense, maybe go defense again. And obviously, Jerome Means fell again to here. Obviously, we don't have him fully scouted as well. He's just 50% scouted. Um, does have, like, decent, at least ratings-wise. We do tight him automatically. 83 speed, 84 excel as a left outside linebacker. Um, so not, again, not too shabby. It's, again, another person at on the defensive side of the ball that we eventually need to, uh, you know, to fill um sixth round we got two more picks here in this draft we have the sixth round and the seventh round selection with our sixth rounder you know still thinking that we've only made two upgrades to the offensive line we are starting to look at offensive line again um the only one that kind of popped up uh was the left guard of Blake Copeland. Blake Copeland was 100% the probably the best person that was left on offensive line. Uh, we don't eventually look at him till here, so I'm just kind of you know explaining myself a little bit. But a lot better. Uh, B impact block. We automatically take him. He's 23 out of UConn. Um, 88 strength is actually not bad for a left guard. So three offensive line positions to really help out Anthony Richardson. Um, kind of at least have time to throw the football rather than you know having to run for his life like Mahomes in the 2020 Super Bowl. Uh, last pick of season one with the seventh round selection. Um, I'd also, you know, remember this guy as well. Um, I mean, every everyone was available at this point. Um, Tony Green went up 119 points. We didn't look at any defensive tackles in this draft, so we did not know what he was going to be. Um, Richard Pittman, you know, he went up a bunch. You know, uh, Jason Childers, maybe get a linebacker, maybe get another corner. Uh, we end up looking at wide receivers first here. Um, Danny Brackett did catch my eye a little bit to start here, um, but we end up looking at centers again, seeing if there's any centers, which they're all. I don't know why we looked at centers and guards again, even though we already knew that they're undrafted free agents. Um, so we weren't going to be able to get anybody. Um, we do look up, uh, look at Nick McKenzie. Um, he wasn't really popping off on like stats wise, especially with the pass block. He can't pass block whatsoever. Uh, so we decided to not go with another offensive lineman, maybe move him to center. Um, we end up going to halfbacks, which there's no halfback whatsoever that was actually good um, at all. Like D carrying, not great. Even fullbacks trying to get maybe a little, little glitchy and get a fullback. Um, but we do end up looking at Danny Brackett again. I keep an eye on him. Definitely keep an eye on him. He ran a four four five in the combine, a four three eight at his pro day. Decent acceleration, not bad, but not good. Um, pretty much solid everywhere else, but B release, B catch in traffic. He's got to at least have probably a C in catching, that uh, I was thinking. We do take him, 23 out of Ole Miss, and he's a hidden development. So, again, keep an eye on Danny Brackett uh, going from season one to season two. So, he's obviously not going to be a superstar. He's, pr he's only going to be a star, but it helps out tremendously down the road just for upgrades and everything. So that was it for the draft class, um, at least for us. We go up to a 31 overall, so in one season we go up 31 overall points and 41 for the offense because we had one to start with Anthony Richardson already there to 70 overall. So uh, looking at the draft, uh, Max Kerr's a 76 overall, of course, at uh, a hidden development. Jason McKnight, 72. Stokes has 75 for that strong safety. Mumphrey at 73. Uh, Callum Fox was a 67 in the fourth round. Means was a 63. Copeland was a 63. And then Brackett was a 67 um, to round out the first draft class um, that we had. So we did take a look at all the other ones to sign to see if we had the best player that was on the board. And I think we actually... We did have Zach Hargrave being... Or, uh, it was I think it was Hargrave. That was a 78. I went too fast for myself there. Uh, there's another uh, 78 with uh, Murray, the corner. Um, yeah, Dwayne Cox and then Marquise Murray with the two 78s. Quarterback in a corner. 
Hilton and Griffin were 77s along with Ash uh, and Gonzalez on Orton. There's a lot of 77s in this draft class. This is a very good draft class for 77s. We just didn't get any. Uh, but we did have one of the best tackles. We did have one of the best, uh, pretty much both tackle positions rise. We Right tackle, left tackle, we did pretty good. Even our strong safety was one of the better ones on the board as well. Um, so I would say that draft class was definitely a win for us. Um, so, but, yeah, uh, I actually think we do change out um, the player here. Um, but, yeah, so we do advance the next week because we can get one undrafted free agent after this. So we are kind of, again, looking at undrafted, which we didn't have a kicker and a punter. So I will say that right now. So we go into free agency, see who we can grab up in this undrafted free agency. And obviously, we need pretty much players. We looked at best overall and actually the youngest guy. And obviously, Reed Watts, a rookie out of LSU, a punter. He's a 74 overall. We decide to get the rookie punter onto the team. Um... 95 kick power as a rookie is insane. So we end up do taking him. So Reed Watts is now our new punter and probably going to be our kicker, um, at least until we get a kicker. Um, obviously, we're thinking, hey, maybe go with a backup quarterback. Obviously, there's really no one there. With halfbacks, nothing really else. I mean, there was a 67. Um, maybe offensive line, but there was really only like a 59 overall. That was like one of the higher ones. Um, right guard as well. There wasn't really the best, like 60 overalls. So that's why we end up going punter and going from there. Um, so that is actually uh, going to do it for the video. Obviously, we do actually make the change here. So I, I did, I was wrong, and we actually do make the change um, from Graham Delpit to strong safety to free safety. But kind of take a look at the roster. Um, you know, McKnight, Copeland, and Kerr as the three offensive linemen. You know, we did have Brackett, the star wide receiver, along with Anthony Richardson at quarterback. Obviously, you know, still not probably going to be the best, along with, um, of course, Fox at tight end. Defensive-wise, we do move Grant Delpit over to free safety to then have Mitch Stokes be our true strong safety. Um and then, of course, Jerome Means at left outside linebacker. And then Devin Mumphrey at corner. So, not too shabby for our first draft class. Um, and, of course, we go 0-17. So, besides the, besides the point there, I uh, appreciate everyone for coming on out uh, for watching the video today. Um, again, we're probably going to be posting this every Sunday and Thursday. So, the next episode will come out on Thursday. We already have... Um, the second episode recorded. It'll be seasons two and season three. Um, kind of, again, mostly going to be a voiceover just like today. But, again, hope you all enjoyed it. If you guys are new, please consider hit that subscribe button down below. It is free, um, as well as leaving a like button down below. It really helps out the channel um, and notifies you, again, for future videos. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. I'm out. Peace.